जय राधा माधवा कुंज बिहारी Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om So we're reading from Canto 1, Chapter 17, Punishment and Reward of Kali. This is verse 41. Ataitani Nasevata Bhubhusu Purusha Kauchet Visasato Dharmo Shilo 
Rajaloka Patir Guruhu Ataitani na Sevata Bubusu Purusha Kachit Vise Sato Dharma Shilo Rajaloka Patir Guruhu Atatani na Sevata Bubusu Purusha Kachit Visa Vise Sato Dharma Shilo Raja Loka Patir Guru Therefore, Therefore, Etani, etani, all these, these, na, na, never, never, sevata, sevata, come come in contact, contact, ubusu, 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 those who desire well-being, purusa, purusa, person, person, kwachit, kwachit, in any circumstances, circumstances, visheshata, Specifically, Specifically. Dharma Shila, those who are on the progressive path of liberation, Raja, Raja. The, king. the king, Loka Pati, Loka Pati. public leader, public leader. Guru. Guru, the Brahmanas and the Sannyasis. <laughs> Translation, therefore, Whoever desires progressive well-being, especially kings, religionists, public leaders, brahmanas, and sannyasis, should never come in contact with the four above-mentioned irreligious principles. So those are the four principles that we follow. Uh, no illicit sex, no intoxication, no meat-eating, no gambling, which establishes the foundation for our practice in Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada's purport. The Brahmanas are the religious preceptors of all other castes, and the sannyasis are the spiritual masters for all castes and orders of society. So also are the king and the public leaders who are responsible for the material welfare of the people. The progressive religionists and those who are responsible human beings or those who do not want to spoil their valuable human life should refrain from all the principles of irreligiosity, especially illicit connection with women. If a brahmana is not truthful, all his claims as a brahmana at once become null and void. If a sannyasi is illicitly connected with women, all his claims as a sannyasi at once become false. Similarly, the king and the public leader are unnecessarily proud or habituated to drinking and smoking. Certainly, they become disqualified to discharge public welfare activities. 
Truthfulness is the basic principle of all religions. The four leaders of human society, namely the sannyasis, the brahmin, the king, and the public leader must be tested crucially by their character and qualification. Before one can be accepted as a spiritual or material master of society, he must be tested by the above-mentioned criteria of character. Such public leaders may be less qualified in their academic qualifications, but it is necessary primarily that they be free from the contamination of the four disqualifications, namely gambling, drinking, prostitution, and animal slaughter. Om Ajnan Timirandasya Gnajana Salakaya Chaksun Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gorvani Pacharine Nirvisesa Sunyavari Pastyatya De Satarine Pancha kalpa turu vishya, kripa sindhu pe vacha, patita nam pavane bhyo, vaishnave bhyo namaho namaha, jai sri krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda, sri advaita ganadara sivasari gaura bhakta vrinda, hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So this particular section is dealing with the foundation by which religious principles are executed and by which religious principles are destroyed, both of them. Mercifulness, cleanliness, austerity, Truthfulness are the foundations by which the principles of religion are based upon. And the age of Kali, the age we live in, is a complete challenge to these. So much so that to find these qualities, especially in those who are in positions of leadership, is very rare and practically non-existent. But this, the, the principle are that actually one leads by character, not so much by academic qualification. And that's the point that's being made here. Prabhupada points that out that even if a person is less qualified in an academic way, but if their character is up to the standard, that means they, um, they exhibit the qualities of at least the mode of goodness, then they can actually do something beneficial for people. Otherwise, if they are below those characteristics, then they're no better than the people they're trying to help. <laughs> and that's what Prabhupada, he keeps making that point over and over again, that the leaders of today's society come from the same class of people who are fallen and then because they are quite intelligent in how to position themselves in order to get public office or position in some aspect of society and we can also extend that also within the spiritual circles too then by using that intelligence they uh, take over different positions and everything becomes spoiled when a leader is spoiled, then the followers can no longer have any faith. And sometimes they follow a false leader also. And then everything goes down. Now this is Kali Yuga. Kalair Doshanidi Raja Nasti Eko Mahagun Kirtanari Vakrishna Sya Mukta Sangam Parambajat. In this age of Kali, Kalo Doshanidi, Ocean Nidi means uh, Ocean, Kaladosha means false. This age is just an ocean of false. It's hard, not hard, but it's practically uh, not possible to find good quality, especially in public leaders in the secular world. But as devotees, we can also, you know, switch this focus here as devotees. 
These principles are actually the standards by which one actually practices Krishna consciousness successfully. And Srila Prabhupada makes that point that if you, he said, if you don't chant your rounds every day, you suffer. <laughs> You suffer. The spiritual master doesn't suffer if you don't chant. Mm -hmm. Although he he wants you to chant and you promise to chant, but if you don't chant, then you're the one that is the loser. But then Prabhupada goes on to say, but if you break the regulative principles, then the spiritual master also has gets a reaction for that. So it's very serious to execute devotional care service because we become responsible not only for ourselves but for the general mood of the, uh, the consciousness of the society. So um, no one is an island in themselves. Everyone is responsible to act in such a way that they actually become an inspiration for others in the process of Krishna consciousness. So these four principles are standard, and but they're always being challenged <laughs> simply by, the, by society and by situations, situations challenge these particular principles and therefore sometimes one falls below that. But that's, that doesn't mean that one is disqualified or fallen. One has to simply pick up and get back up and then again keep the standard. That is the position here. And then Prabhupada wants to make a point that those who are in certain leadership positions um, are no longer, just like we use the example, that um, if one is engaged in devotional service and they're engaged, but they're not following the principles, then that service really, it doesn't go beyond a certain point. It doesn't reach Krishna, ultimately. Because these are the foundations by which character is there, and the mode of goodness is the actual standard by which devotional service. Uh, Krishna also told that to Arjuna. He said, enter into the mode of goodness, because the lower modes cannot be, one cannot execute devotional service in there. So Prabhupada makes this point over again, and just to illustrate, the Shastras also point out that the mode of goodness is foundational for the execution of Krishna consciousness. And what are those, what is those qualities of the mode of goodness? That's mentioned in the, in the Bhagavad Gita, in the uh, 18th chapter, uh, simplicity, humility, tolerance, uh, austerity, uh, detachment from sense gratification, and knowing the Shastras, executing those principles for the benefit of others, in other words, being an example, not only in word, but in action also. And, of course, uh, uh, serving in such a way that one is actually representing the parampara. In other words, one should be as ideal in character because character is everything. Sometimes they say that people, especially in the people in the material world, think that what you have and what you do is usually your position in society. That's, in other words, you're considered by your greatness or your popularity is by what you have or by what you do. But that doesn't apply in spiritual circles, nor does it apply in material circles, others, but that's the standard by which they have developed. Therefore, it says in the, in those in the mode of ignorance, they think, if I can get something, then I can do something. And if I can do something, if I can get something, then I can do something. Then I can be something. So get is first. In a mode of passion, people think if I can do something, then I can get something, and then I can be something. And in a mode of goodness, if I can be something, then I can do something, and then I can get something. Of course, these are still within the realm 
So you see how the modes work in such a way that consciousness is reflected by a certain ideal or certain focus in activity. But a devotee doesn't think in that way. A devotee thinks, if I can somehow or other please the Lord and please the devotees in the execution of devotional service, then that is the success of my Krishna consciousness. So that is the mood in devotional service, to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, to please the devotees in the execution of our Krishna consciousness. But one cannot do that actually unless one is up to the standard. So these four principles are foundational. That one should avoid these sinful activities like the plague, we might use the example. <laughs> that to follow these things, Prabhupada, actually Prabhupada made a very interesting statement. He said, if you chant from the time you're initiated, and that if you chant 16 rounds every day and you follow the four regulative principles your entire life, you will go back home, back to Godhead. He made it very direct that in this age, especially, it's very difficult, very difficult to keep that standard year after year after year after year. But how do you do that? Sadhu Sangha. That's what we're doing. Here's the important. Satam 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 prasangam mama virya sam vido bhavanti ritkarna rasayanat kata. In the association of devotees, especially those who are fixed in Krishna consciousness, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord is, is nectar to the ear and to the heart. And by that, and one gets inspired, and that is, that is as it says in that verse from the Bhagavatam, then pure devotional service actually begins. So um, as much as we can take that opportunity to associate devotees and hear and chant the glories of the Lord in that association, we can be free from the effects of the material energy because Maya is always finding ways to minimize or to dilute the process of devotional service. Prabhupada said Maya can never come at you full force because she knows the devotees can see Maya face to face, but she comes through the back door. <laughs> the back door is, oh, yeah, just a little sense gratification here. It doesn't hurt. You know, you're still a devotee. You're fixed. And, you know, and, you know, why be so strict? <laughs> you know, uh, that strictness will make you hard-hearted. You should be, you know, uh, you know, nice guy, <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, you know, kind of go with the flow. Chat your rounds, be a nice person, and once in a while, you know, take off and do something else, get a break here and there. You know, marijuana is legal in some states. You know. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, this is devotees don't think like that. But Maya is always finding ways to minimize or dilute the devotee's determination in Krishna consciousness. Therefore, the, in the association of devotees and hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, it's like a wall that protects the devotee. Kali Yuga is just an ocean of faults. There's a beautiful story in the, Shri, in the, in the Mahabharata, which describes right after the battle of Kurukshetra, um, Yudhisthira had now accepted the throne. And now being an ideal king, because in, Vedic, in the Vedic culture, or the mood of a saintly king, as he sees the progeny, or the, the uh, the citizens of the country as being his children. He sees them in that way. And therefore, as a father would te treat the children, a king will also try to do everything they can in order to uplift the citizens, both in their material and spiritual practice. So Yudhisthira now had taken the throne, and he had decided that anyone who wanted to meet him could come and meet him at any time, or just come, they put Bhima, Bhima was there, he was the secretary, and he would meet the people, and then if Yudhisthira was available, they could go in and speak whatever. And so that was set up, first person comes, comes up and says, Oh Bhima, 
I have to see you to stare. Something really amazing happened. I can't figure it out. Can you? Can I see you to stare? I, Bhima says, well, I think he's busy now. Maybe you can ask me. All right. What is that? Well, I decided to build a nice garden. So I got some nice flowers, some shrubbery, some arrangements, and I planted so many different types of flowers and made a beautiful garden. It was so, I was so proud of what I had done. But then I was thinking, this garden should be protected. So I'm going to make a wall around the garden to protect the garden. So it took me some time, and I made this nice wall. And as soon as I finished the wall, guess what happened? The wall started to encroach on the garden and destroy the garden. I made the garden nicely, and I made the wall to protect the garden, and now the wall is destroying the garden. Can you give me an explanation? Oh, you should go in and see Eudas there. <laughs> Next man comes. Oh, Bhima, uh, I saw something today. Actually, I did something today, and I need an explanation. Can I see Eudas there? Well, he's busy right now. Ask me. Okay. Well, I had a bucket full of water, and I decided to take the bucket and pour it in as many cups as the bucket had. So I found five cups, just enough, and I filled the five cups nicely with the water. All the bucket, the bucket was empty, didn't spill anything. And then I took those five cups and put it back in the bucket, and now the bucket was only half full. I started with five, a full bucket, put it in five cups, put it very carefully back into the bucket, and now it's only half full. Explanation. Uh, Bhima said, I think you should go see Yudhisthira. <laughs> okay. So, third man comes. Oh, Bhima, what I saw today is amazing. I can't believe it my eyes, but I know it's true. Tell me. Oh, okay. So, there was this elephant, really big elephant. He was walking, 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 and then as he was going, he was coming right against a big wall. And he just kept going, he crashed through the wall, he went all the way through the wall, but he got almost through in his little tiny tail. You know, those elephants, they have those little tiny tails. Got stuck. The whole elephant went through the wall, except his tail he couldn't get through. Can you explain? I think you better go see Eunice there. <laughs> okay. Fourth man comes. Bhima. Most amazing thing happened today. Uh, can I tell you? Yeah. I don't know if I can solve your problem. So far I haven't been so successful, but you can tell me anyway. All right. So I decided to go to a place I'd never been before. And I just start walking, walking, walking in a, in a direction I never went. And I was walking, 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 and I noticed as I was, I was going, the whole environmental scene started to change and things started to become dark and then I saw all these rock formations and then I looked around and everything looked so foreboding and everything looked and I looked all around and all I could see was rocks in every direction. I didn't know what to do and I got scared. It was starting to get dark. So I decided to get out of there. So I started to figure where, what direction should I go. So I just started to run and as I was running I looked down on the ground, and out of all, there was only rocks around, but there was this little green creeper coming out through the rocks. So I decided, let me pull it. So I pulled the creeper, and as soon as I pulled it, amazing thing happened. All the darkness was gone, the mountains were gone, the sun came out, and everything was beautiful. Can you explain? Uh, I think you better go see Eudistir. <laughs> So he goes in, after some time Bhima comes in and Yudhisthira is there, and nobody's with Yudhisthira. And uh, so Bhima said, did you see those four men? He said, what four men? I didn't see any. Oh, those four men. Those four men represent Kali Yuga. Krishna 
has just left the planet and Kali Yuga will now come in full force. Beam asks, can you explain their stories? Yes, the man with the garden. The citizens of the country will elect their rulers to protect them, but the rulers will destroy the citizens. You make the garden, the wall encroaches on the garden. The man with the bucket and the five cups. Yes, this is very sad. Parents, guardians, and others will do whatever they can to raise their children and to help them nicely, but the children will not appreciate their parents. They will always find fault. And so you have a full bucket, you give everything, and then when you try to put it back, you get half. How about the elephant? Okay. The elephant. Well, if you have money, you can get justice. If you're poor, even if you're innocent, no justice. So the big man, he can go, he can do anything because he has money, he can cover all his mistakes, he can by justice, but if you're poor, even if you're innocent, you struggle. And sometimes you're victimized by that. The little, the big elephant goes through, but the tail gets stuck. What about the last one? And then, uh, Yudhisthira starts to smile. He said, this is very good. He said, in this age of Kali, there is going to be so many faults, but there is that one little green creeper he pulled out of the ground, that is the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare. And so that is the... That is the bright light in this age of Kali, the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So that is our shelter, that is our protection against Maya, and that is our happiness in Krishna consciousness, and it's our purification of the heart. As we mentioned that one verse, there are so many problems in this age, but one who seriously and regularly takes shelter of the holy name, Japa, and kirtan. Those who, those who develop a taste for japa will develop a, a sweet taste for kirtan, and those who are enthusiastic about kirtan, they also look forward to japa, <laughs> theoretically. <laughs> of course, that doesn't always happen, but it should be like that. Because both of them are there, as Ayendra used to say, uh, japa is like pills, tablets, and kirtan is like the direct injection. <laughs> so, so this is our, this is why we're here this weekend to, of course many of you are live here, but those of us, thousands of devotees will be congregating for this wonderful program. So it's a chance to really go deeper into our Krishna consciousness and and to associate with so many wonderful devotees. This is the essence of our spiritual practice. Chat, dance, take nice Krishna prasadam, read nice books about spiritual life, and go back home, back to Godhead. Forget about the rest. <laughs> That's an oversimplification. It's like one of these old day classes you used to hear in the beginning, right? But I don't know so much. That's all I know is the Holy Name's everything. That's all I know. <laughs> Any questions or comments? Anything? Yes, Mataji in the back there. Yeah, that's a, 
That's a great art, to remain fixed in one's execution of devotional service in a regulated way. Because regulation has so many benefits to it, and it allows the mind to be controlled. When one is regulated in devotional service, one can fix the mind in a, in a, in a controlled way in the activities of devotional service. So uh, one has to strive for regulation, but one also has to not be de attached to regulation because circumstances may also appear that require some immediate activity or some change in one's regulated. To be enthusiastic and determined for regulations is a qualification that's necessary. But to, be, to, to become rigid where circumstances may, just like I remember when I was in New Vrindavan when we began, um, there, was, there was a requirement before you go, go on the altar in the morning, you had to have at least eight rounds chanted. You couldn't go on the altar and dress the deities or do any kind of puja unless you finished at least eight of your rounds, even if you were a Pajari. But then again, there was sometimes there was a shortages of Pujaris for that morning, and then they needed someone to do the service. So they would ask, and then people would say, well, I haven't done my eight rounds yet. But then the emergency came, so what becomes more important? That standard that we have set, or actually, the immediate need that there is needed some service for the deities. So that's an example how regulation can also be uh, adjusted in order for, to, for a higher principle. But in essence, we should practice that. And I think the most important thing is when you regulate your sadhana, then the rest of the day becomes easier to regulate. That's the foundation for your your regulation. Yeah, and for those of us who travel regularly, we find ourselves always adjusting according to what is the most important thing at the time, or what is needed at the time. If you don't travel so much, you're fixed in a particular service in a particular place, then regulation becomes somewhat naturally easy but when you travel and many of us do you find that you have to see because maya will give you some ideas when you don't have anything so regulation she will always come up with some ideas on what you could be doing at this time so be careful of that and the best way is to always chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama. Hare. Even if you're irregulated, when you chant, you're regulated. <laughs> as long as you're in association with Krishna, especially through the holy name, then that is the highest, that is regulation <laughs> in that sense. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Anyone else? Yes, before we're... First of all, um, I have two questions. Well, I, I remember one of your classes that you gave at the man and you talked about how um, you chant the mantra all the time and it actually <laughs> saved you. You know, in between whatever you... I try. <laughs> I, I haven't reached that standard of chanting 24 hours a day. <laughs> well, I'm just saying in between whatever you're doing, just chanting. Uh, if you're, you know, on a flight and you're carrying your luggage, just, you know, just waiting in line. Just keep the holy name going. If we practice that consciousness, that try to always remember the holy name, then when we forget, then all of a sudden, because we're trying, then Krishna will remind you, oh, you wanted a chance. So Krishna's in the heart. He reminds you what you want to do. So if you want to chant always, Krishna will help you. 
It'll remind you when you forget. <laughs> so strict with you know taking a little uh, mm. Starbucks and going uh, these uh, energy drinks well I need I need I need this to do my service um, maybe you can comment on what in regards to what you just read and also for those of us who see this going on how we can I mean, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, but is there any... The question is, when we we feel a little, we need to go outside of the protocol in order to yeah. get a little... And the scriptures don't say that. <laughs> they say the association of devotees is the inspiration by which you, you, can, you can fulfill all your desires for Krishna consciousness. If you're in the, if you're in the mood in the right mood of association, everything you need is there, and that means in the mood of service. I mean, for if you and then you, that's called boga, and that means you actually break that principle. You know. There's so many things you can take. Keep it within the realm of what is being offered. What take, keep it in the realm that what is what can be offered. We can't offer Starbucks coffee to Krishna. Although it's, there's a lot of stars in there, it's still... <laughs> you'll be seeing stars after a while. <laughs> the comment comes back, you're just a fanatic. Well, I'm just... well... Yeah, it's good to be fanatic for the right thing. Yeah, we are fanatic. <laughs> yeah, if you know what is good, yeah, then be fanatic for that. Fanatic is, the word is used in a loose way. Fanatic means just uh, something that you believe is right and then you you want to push it up on everyone else. But when something is right, it's been given by the authorities. To become a fanatic for that means that you're you're following the principles properly, yeah, yeah. But we do it in a nice way. It's not like we become so, you know, hard-hearted in doing these things. Yeah. We have a question over there by the wall. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fast, Maharaj, because I have. I mean, Swiss cheese brain. Um, the uh, comment here is that it has to come from a place of love, you know, because if we're strict, but it's not with love, then we're looked at as a fanatic. <laughs> hmm. But if you're loving, yeah. and that's why you're strict. You can be strict and still loving. <laughs> that's right. Strictness is not, doesn't comp compete with the loving mood. <laughs> it's just when you try to force it on someone else, then it becomes uh, unpalatable. Be an example. And that's the idea. Yes, question. I was, the uh, calm, the verse in purport speaking about the um, disqualifications of the present leadership Mm. in our country um, it's such a disturbing element to have such one half of the country absorbed in one mood and then the other half and then but the leaders are all another mood rascals in a sense of nobody's developing good character both all the people of the different sides of the it's, main leadership are, are very horrible people Personally, they're not, you know, people like to say, oh, this one's really good, that one's really good. But if you judge them by their characters, then you see actually it's a very disturbing element and we can't get away from the stress 
because we live here and we have to hear about it. And so, what do we do? What do we do? Don't to, listen uh, to the news. That's huh? all. Don't listen to the news. <laughs> We, uh, we don't really depend on these people at all. We simply have, Prabhupada has given us everything as a society for our function on all levels. You know, sometimes we're disturbed by what happens on the outside, but it, it's not gonna affect. If you take shelter, as mentioned here, take shelter of the holy name, you're protected from all of that. Krishna will give us protection from all of the negativity that goes around. It's this when you buy into that lifestyle, then you also become victimized by that. So the Prabhupada's whole program was to develop a lifestyle that was somewhat uh, distinct from all of the, the all of the influences that come around us. And what was that lifestyle? Prabhupada said, you know, build your build these farm communities. Build these farm communities, plant your, you know, agriculture, cow protection, and become less and less dependent on the eight secular society for everything. Of course, there are still some, just like, you know, if the electricity goes out and then there's no lights in the temple. So we're still dependent on what happens there. And you know, we have to buy food, and therefore, when the prices of we go out and the inflation hits, then we have to find more money in order to get the same amount that we got earlier. So the Prabhupada knew that all of this would eventually become more and more destructive to the quality of life, and therefore he said, you know, build these farm communities. Still, we have these temples, and temples are very important. But he said the farms are for the grihastas, the temples are for the brahmacharis and sannyasis for preaching making devotees in the, in the cities and sending them to the farms. Idealistically, yeah, but in real, in real life situation, America is not like that. Everybody lives in the cities and we all work. Yeah. So the farm thing hasn't really worked in terms of like being realistic for most people. Most it's people not depend enough. on education and economy. That's a nice thing to say, but look at it. How many people are doing that? Practically no one. Compared it's, to the amount of free houses there are in the cities. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but that's what that's Prabhupada's vision for our society. He said it fifty years ago. He no, said I mean, I'm not disagreeing with Prabhupada, I'm just saying the way things are is different. We haven't developed the farm communities. Yeah. Well, there's some effort in that and then and there's individuals who are doing it in a smaller way with a few families are trying it. But if we remain focused on this society, we might find ourselves in a very awkward situation. As time goes on, things are gonna deteriorate more and more. So yeah, uh, emphasis needs to be pushed in that direction. A little bit more. Temples will go on, but still, when, for those who are family people and they have require some, some resources in order to maintain the family, then you have to think, why do we have to become so dependent on the secular society for everything? <coughs> that means we become influenced by whatever happens. And that, may, that also challenges our practice in spiritual life also. Because when we become too much absorbed in maintaining ourselves, then when we minimize or we don't have enough time for the, the real business in life, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, associating with devotees. It's unfortunate many of our devotees are still very much dependent on the secular society, but it's a gradual withdrawal from that and moving towards a lifestyle that is more conducive to self-sufficiency. It's possible, there are, pla there are places that are doing it, but it's not developed and to the point where it's become 100% yet. Unfortunately, the leaders are not giving so much emphasis on this problem. And that's one of the problems. We need to put more emphasis on that. So I did a book, 
and I'll make it available during the sadhu sangh. It's called Krishna's Way, Natural Living. It's about Prabhupada's statements on, on simple living, farm communities, agriculture, cow protection, and also his statements about how to develop that and how to move away from this, you know, soul-killing lifestyle. <laughs> Yeah, but it's possible with the mercy of the Lord and the, with, with the instructions given by the spiritual master, anything is possible. It's a matter of planning and doing it. But that, that opens up a whole discussion on, well, I'm not inclined to that type of lifestyle. That's true for many people, but there are those who do. And it can, everything could be there in terms of whatever we require to live nicely. But then that is the vision of labor, and then the whole thing is based on the Van Arsham system. Engaging people according to their swadharma, their natural tendencies, and in, in serving the Lord in that way. So uh, I don't want to get into it because it's just like a whole subject that could go on for a whole day, but... That's the essence of. Hmm? Yeah, and, and yeah, any well, anybody wants to talk about it more, I'm always available. But and then of course. Right. Yeah. And that's important. The holy name is, you know, the Yuga Dharma. It's the means for inspiring everyone towards devotional service and bringing people to the perfectional stage. Every, everything's there in the Holy Name. But then again, the social structure, how we live is also, you know, gonna support or take away from our practice in spiritual life. I just want to add one quick thing. I agree with you, 100%. We should have Sato Sangha every weekend. <laughs> Huh? That's the Sunday feast. Yeah. Here we have a wonderful congregation, and we have lots and lots of youth that come, and we do kirtan for hours. Yeah, day. this kind of temple is ideal. It should be, it's an example for the rest of the society. I just have one quick thing to add. To yeah, the push the button at the bottom of the mic. There's a little button at the very bottom. It'll turn it back on. Um, just three days ago, we were in New Vrindavan. And um, in the Prashadam Hall, there's a nice sign that <coughs> Prabhupada said, if you, by Prashadam distribution, you will dismantle the ill effects of Kali Yuga. So, <coughs> and I think it's very wonderful what's happening here. And uh, I think this is a, a great thing to remember that uh, prashadam distribution is very uh, potent. And yeah, towards the end of Prabhupada's stay with us in 1977, he made, he made a, this comment over and over again. He said, he said, people in general are not able to understand our philosophy. Therefore, he said, we should just emphasize prashadam distribution and chanting the holy name. It's not that we don't, we, we distribute, we write books, distribute books, and we encourage people to understand. But generally, for the, the mood of Kali Yuga, Harinam, and Prasadam distribution is the attractive force in this age. These two to be combined, yeah. yeah.
Prabhupada made that point. He said, yeah, people are not inclined to, our, to philosophy. That's just the age of Kali. <laughs> yeah, that's just the, the mentality, yes. People want something fast and something in, enjoyable. We got it. Harinam Prashad. <laughs> yes. It's very big temple focused, and maybe we don't have like so many farms, but there are smaller grassroots projects. And sometimes these temples can delegate manpower or support to those smaller projects as well in surrounding areas. I think that's often overlooked uh, at times. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. More of a supportive mood instead of just my temple. <laughs> if you have something, share it with others. <laughs> That's the idea, yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj. In the temple we started a small group, farm community group. Farm community group. We okay. started a small uh, community group. We have a group of like uh, seven people now. So our idea is the same, uh, uh, having a farm life, uh, becoming self-dependent in future, mm -hmm. and the cow protection. Um, we have a couple of, as Prabhu, Prabhuji mentioned, we have a couple of projects mm -hmm. where devotee purchased the land. Like some devotees purchased the same idea of Srila Prabhupada. They purchased 200 acres and some like 85 acres. Mm -hmm. And, but the thing is, that uh, they have purchased, yes. but they cannot do anything much because there is a gap between um, the land is available, but there's a gap between the people, the devotees, and and the project. What is that gap? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that like one is we are not not so experienced in this. In well, yeah, you can't do something unless you have this, uh, uh, an understanding of how to do it. <laughs> And you also learn from example of those who are, have successfully achieved the same thing you're trying to achieve. You learn from, you know, learn from perfection. Get an idea. It's not something you can just do. Many times we started farm communities and after a while they failed. Because enthusiasm was there, but the way we approached the whole thing was, different, was wrong. It has to be done right. And it takes a group, and it takes a vision, it takes leadership. It's not an easy, and it's not just like, okay, let's go start a farm. <laughs> what I recommend do is, the, uh, what we recommend is grihastas is do get a few grihastas together, a few families, and they can get a piece of land, one cow, and start from that level. And if we start a major project, then we might find ourselves struggling to even Support the project. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Hare Krishna. Holiness Chandra Swami Maharaj Ki Jai.